Good afternoon. A funny thing happened on the way to the wedding. I think it was Emily that forgot the groom's ring. <laughs> Whatever funny thing happened to you on the way to the wedding, we're glad you're here. And this is a celebration, but it is also a holy, sacred moment as we witness Michael and Emily pledging their lives to one another until death parts them. I encourage you to participate in this worship service by following along in your bulletin and you'll see places where you, the congregation, will respond and you'll also have an opportunity to sing a song. We begin. Dear friends, we have come together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Emily and Michael, to surround them with our prayers and to share in their joy. Michael, will you have Emily to be your wife, to live together in a holy marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? Emily, will you have Michael to be your husband, to live together in a holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. And now, everyone here, will all of you, by God's grace, do everything in your power to uphold and care for these two persons in their life together? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Creator and Redeemer, as you gladdened the wedding in Galilee by the presence of your Son, so bring your joy to this wedding by his presence now. Look in favor upon Emily and Michael, and grant that they, rejoicing in all your gifts, may at length celebrate the unending marriage feast with Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Rise, my soul will rest in your embrace 
for I am yours and you are mine yeah. you are mine Jesus mine Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you will come me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you will call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior hey, My Savior Jesus, my Savior Call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. You are mine. Jesus, yeah, yeah. Ooh, you're would like to share with you two scripture passages. First, a reading from the Song of Solomon. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire and the very flame of the, and the, very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. But if a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he would be utterly despised. The word of the Lord. And now a reading from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, 
I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. And now, faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. a moment to share with you in the form of a sermon. So grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. William Sloan Coffin, famous pastor of the last century, said this, I think, therefore I am. Of course, that was not unique to him. But he said, nonsense. I love, therefore I am. I love, therefore I am. We're going to talk about love today. The Apostle Paul talked about love. There are, I'm sure you've heard that there are four forms of love in Greek. It's a language the Apostle Paul wrote in. There's actually six, but let's look at four for <clears throat> one second. Eros is erotic or romantic love, or maybe I should say romantic or erotic love, sexual love. That word is not found in the Bible, interestingly enough. Storge, friendship, the kind of love that's a friendship love. Phileos is family love. And then agape is self-sacrificing love. We think of it as divine love, the kind of love God has for us. Well, the Apostle Paul uses the word agape for love. Self-sacrificing, divine love, the kind of love God showed us in Christ when Christ gave his all for us. That's the kind of love the Apostle Paul was trying to get the Corinthian church to understand they were to have. Because they were a mess, they were all divided and uh, people insulting and being rude and difficult with one another, just like any church, right? If you've ever been in any church, it doesn't take you long to be wounded. The Apostle Paul says, you are to love, meaning it's through those wounds, when we wound each other, that God teaches us in the community of faith to love. Well, guess what, Michael and Emily? You are getting married. God is going to teach you love in marriage. He's going to teach it to you very often through the wounds you give each other. Let me give you an example. I told everybody last night that Monday night, I came home for supper, I usually eat supper 7 o'clock or later, and I came home at 7 o'clock. Mick had already left because she had a meeting at the church. And I ate supper, and my, li my lower lip grew about that big. It was huge. I wish I had a picture to show you. It was huge. So when she got home, I said, don't wash that plate, I'm sending it to the FBI. <laughs> and of course, she said, kiddingly, she, I don't have time to mess with your food, and you know it. It's much different than her response to me when we were first married. Mick is an excellent cook a very good cook. She takes pride in her cooking. 
But one day at supper, I said, boy, this is really good, Mick. This is great. And after a couple more bites, I said, would you please pass the salt and pepper? <laughs> and oh, did I wound her. Her response was, don't you ever have anything good to say? I went, what do you mean? I just told you how good it was. But the need for salt and pepper was a tremendous insult to her. Just think, 35 years, and now I can suggest she's poisoning me, and she laughs it off. <laughs> now, it just doesn't happen to me. It happens to everyone. Maxie Dunham, who is a, a pastor, a, in his day he served these huge congregations, 20,000 members, and he was at one time the editor of the upper room. And he said when he first got married, now he's a pastor, and he married his wife one year out of high school. And he said his wife and their family, they would laugh, cry, hug, argue with one another. And he said, we didn't do that. We reasoned things out. So he remembers one night when they were early in their marriage, she wanted to discuss something with him. They were in the bedroom. And of course, she yelled and argued. And he said, my, when you want to talk this over reasonably, I'll be downstairs. And you know what he said about that? I'm sure I killed something in her that day. And he said it took seven years before he knew how deeply he wounded her. And what did God put Jerry, his wife, in his life for? To teach him how to love and argue and hug and cry. Well, that's what God's going to teach you guys. Is it easy? It'll be hard, but it'll be great because, oh, such meaning comes into your life. And you learn love. Not to be arrogant, rude, resentful. Love the truth. Might even cry. I shouldn't, excuse me. It's more than might even. You are going to cry with one another. So, you know what? I have a lot of uh, stuff to say, but I'm not going to say it. I just want you to remember this. How can you think about this? How can this help you? How can you put the Apostle Paul's words into action knowing that God is up there working in your life to teach you through one another? Remember, first and foremost, and I probably have told you this already, that Michael, Emily is a gift from God. Okay? Emily, Michael is a gift from God. Michael, remember, she's the best thing that's ever happened to you. Okay? Emily, Michael is the best thing that ever happened to you. Now, Michael, I know this is hard to imagine that sweet Emily might be someday rude, arrogant, and resentful toward you. And when you start feeling bad, just give me a call, because I'll give you a big dope slap. <laughs> and I'll remember, remind you that God gave her to you. She is the best thing that God has given you. And he did it just so you will learn to love her always. 
and Emily. When Michael is arrogant, rude, and resentful. I know Michael's a pretty sweet guy too, but it might happen. It's very often we're wounded more by our others' wounds. When we wound them, we're wounded more sometimes. But anyway, just remember, and I would not give you a dope slap, <laughs> that here's the best thing that happened to you. God's gift to teach you love, to teach you life. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn. Emily and Michael, I invite you to join your hands and to declare your vows. Michael, repeat after me. I take you, Emily, to be my wife. And these things I promise you. I will respect, trust, Help and, care for you. help and care for you. I will share my life with you. Will share my life with you. I will forgive you as well as we have been forgiven. And I will try with you to better understand ourselves, to better understand ourselves. the world and God, world and God. Through, the and the through the best and worst of what is to come until death parts us. Now, Emily, I take you, Michael, I take you, Michael to, be my husband. to be my husband. And these things I promise you, I will be faithful to you and honest with you. I will respect, trust, I will respect, trust help, and care for you. help and care for you. I will share my life with you. I will forgive you as well as we have been forgiven. And I will try with you, and I will try with you to, better to better understand ourselves, the world and God, the world and God through the best and worst of what is to come, until death parts us. We give you thanks, O God, 
O God of grace, for your love and faithfulness to your people. Bless these rings that they may be symbols of the enduring commitment Emily and Michael have made to each other through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness. Emily and Michael, by their promises before God and in the presence of this assembly, have bound themselves to one another as husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. The Lord God, who created our first parents and established them in marriage, establish and sustain you, that you may find delight in each other and grow in holy love until your life's end. Amen. May you dwell in God's presence forever. May true and constant love preserve you. Jesus.
Our service continues with the prayers. Let us bless God for all the gifts which, in which we rejoice today. We praise you, O God, for the joy that Emily and Michael have found in each other and pray that the strength of their love may reflect your gracious love and enrich our common life. Gracious and tender God. God of love, from your great store of strength, give them power and patience affection and understanding, courage and love toward you, toward each other and toward the world. Gracious and tender God. Most gracious God, you have made us in your image and given us over to one another's care. Hear the prayers of your people that unity may overcome division, hope vanquish despair, and joy conquer sorrow through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, receive this benediction. Almighty God, send you joy and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you, the holy angels accompany you, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. I am pleased to present to you Michael and Emily Groom's husband and wife. Let us rejoice with them as they celebrate the joy they have found with each other.
You may be seated if you want. 